The last model of the RockShox Pike launched in 2013. It was a really popular fork and it was the benchmark that all other trail and enduro forks were measured against. This is a brand new RockShox Pike. I'm gonna take a proper look and also take it for a ride, see how it works. Pike is RockShox's trail and enduro fork, and they're really keen to get it back into that middle ground. Rather than the Lyric that covers that longer travel end, this comes at 160 mil travel maximum on the 27.5 inch model. On the 29 inch wheels, it comes in at 140 mil max. And this is a boost fork only, so it's been designed from the ground up to be boost. So rather than the old style of having a 100 mil fork and also the boost 110 mil width, They've designed this just for boost. So that is something that RockShots believe is the future of forks. Not only just for fork technology, but boost actually makes those wheels stronger by getting that larger bracing angle of the spoke. So looks like that is the future. So this boost fork gives you space for 2.8 inch tires on both wheel sizes. So there's loads of clearance in there. Also on the bigger 29 inch fork, you've got space for a 27.5 plus. So all sorts of different wheel sizes and tire sizes available to fit this fork. As far as brake rotor size, it comes down to a 180 mil direct mount on this. So RockShox believe you shouldn't be using anything smaller than a 180 mil rotor on this fork, which makes sense for trail and enduro bikes. You have a couple of different options with the axle. Here is this stealth maxle where you need a six mil Allen key to take out the front wheel, but it's nice and neat. You've also got that ultimate maxle option to make it a little bit quicker with the lever to get that front wheel out. The Pike is a 35 millimeter fork, and as ever, it's got these really helpful markings on the stanchion to help you set your sag. This fork is actually set in the 150 mil travel setting at the moment. On the left-hand fork, you've got the sticker on the back side to give you a guide as to how much pressure to put in that air cartridge for your weight. So in the left fork leg, we've got this debonair air spring, and that's been designed with a larger negative air spring. So that gives you much better small bump sensitivity, much more like the Lyric. So that's really good for fatigue in the hands, but also for grip on that front tire. The more that tire's on the floor and those small bumps, the better grip you're gonna have. So it's not quite as plush as the Lyric, as the Lyric is a longer travel fork. You need to keep this trail fork a little bit more lively, a little bit more sporty. It's also got more mid-stroke support, so it's much more like a coil spring where you've got that small bump sensitivity, but also it ramps up. Again, that's tunable with bottomless tokens. And something that's really interesting is because this fork has been designed from the ground up, the 27.5 and 29-inch versions both have exactly the same air volume in that fork. And that means it's made it much easier for rock shots to set those base settings and get them more accurate for each rider. So now the pressure in that fork leg almost corresponds directly to your weight. So I personally weigh 70 kilos, I've got 70 PSI in that fork, and that works pretty well. Again, I could put more air pressure in there if I'm a more aggressive rider, or again, tune it with those bottomless tokens. Even the air spring cap has been thought about. It's really low profile now to give the clearance for frame manufacturers. And to get inside the fork, you now need a cassette tool rather than having to use those really low profile spanners in the past. In the right leg, we've got a Charger 2 damper, and that comes with four different options. You've got two remote options and two knob options. This one is the RCT3 version. The three standing for three different settings on the compression damping or lockout. So that is open, pedal, or firm. In the open setting now, we've got a much larger range of low speed compression control than on the previous Pike. And also the pedal settings now designed to be much more usable on things like flow trails and pump tracks. And even the full firm lockout option, because it's a trail fork, is designed to be usable, not quite so locked out as a cross-country fork. You've also got the rebound damping control on the bottom of that right-hand leg. 
A lot of design work now has gone into this charger damper to make it really lightweight to turn this knob from open to pedal to firm. On the old fork you actually had to manually turn a spring inside the fork to do that. This is much lighter so it feels really nice on the hand but also it's light enough to give you that option to use a remote. So I've got the pike set in 150mm travel and I've got that mounted on a 140mm travel bike. And I've got to say RockShox have worked really hard on getting their suspension, the pike fork, to match their shocks. And the bike does feel really balanced. I've got the fork set in open mode at the moment, so nice and active. I've got loads of adjustment on that low speed compression. The bike feels really playful, definitely nice and plush and that low speed stuff. So what that small bump sensitivity feels really good. It does ramp up nicely on those bigger hits makes this bike actually feel really playful sort of sporty but it can actually give it a pretty good thrashing as well really abuse the trail bike a little bit So there you go, there's the brand new RockShox Pike, a fork that had a lot to live up to. Its previous editions were really popular fork. It's interesting to see SRAM RockShox just developing the boost size fork from now on. Probably something we're gonna see across the line from other fork manufacturers as well. You get all those clearance advantages. Also, we're gonna see bigger tires probably on the market, 2.6, 2.8. They also get the same stiffness as the old pipe for 150 grams less. If you want to see more videos from GMBN, click on the GMBN logo here to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done already. And click up there for Enduro versus Cross Country. Click down there for how to set your sag. Give us a thumbs up if you like this video.